No one wakes up in the morning and thinks they're going to be involved in an accident. Many of these pilots who crash their airplanes fail to appreciate their own limitations. There are multiple resources out there available to these pilots like the Decide Checklist, the I'm Safe Checklist, or the PAVE Checklist, which can help these pilots make good decisions. As a GA pilot and flight instructor, I'm very familiar with the difficult decisions that pilots have to make when assessing the risks for a flight. It breaks my heart every time a pilot, a family member, or a friend flying with that pilot is killed in an accident that could have been easily prevented with proper risk assessment or good decision making. In July of 2006, near Winter Park, Colorado, two pilots were killed when they flew their airplane very close to mountainous terrain, also known as granite surfing. Oftentimes, these pilots are flying in hazardous conditions, high winds or deteriorating weather conditions. We also see pilots who are chronic offenders who are flying well beyond their personal limitations and they become somewhat desensitized to the risk without consequences and they become used to this. They continue to take the risk until there's an accident. In June of 2010 in Anchorage, Alaska, in a crash where an airplane was found to be significantly over gross weight, the pilot and his three passengers survived but were seriously injured. A two-year-old was killed. In March of 2012 near Glencoe, Minnesota, a non-instrument rated private pilot and his two passengers were killed when he flew the airplane into IMC weather conditions and their airplane broke apart in flight. There are at least five things that you can do to avoid being involved in this type of accident. Number one, develop good decision-making practices that will allow you to identify personal attitudes that are hazardous to safe flying, apply behavior modification techniques, recognize and cope with stress, and effectively use all resources. Two, practice risk management. Understand that effective risk management takes practice. It's a decision-making process by which you can systematically identify hazards, assess the degree of risk, and determine the best course of action. Three, honestly assess your skills and your fitness for flight. Be honest with yourself and your passengers about your skill level and proficiency. Be honest with yourself and the FAA about your medical conditions and medical fitness for flight. Four, plan for contingencies. Plan ahead with flight diversions or cancellation alternatives and brief your passengers about the alternatives before the flight. Five, resist external pressures. Refuse to allow external pressures such as the desire to save time or money or the fear of disappointing passengers to influence you to attempt or continue a flight in conditions in which you are not comfortable. As a pilot, I'm well aware of the challenges for managing both the risks for myself and my passengers, which is why it's important that I use checklists for personal and decision-making processes. As an air safety investigator, I'm well aware of the tragic results of accidents where poor risk assessment and decision-making have taken place. It's important that pilots mitigate these risks by talking to other pilots, learning from their experience, having contingency plans and putting them in place when necessary, and possibly postponing the flight until the next day. I take very close to heart the aviation statement that I'd rather be on the ground wishing that I was flying instead of in the air wishing that I was on the ground.